These are the larvae of what is called the Miller moth, and I have been breeding these insects in captivity. It may sound unusual, but yes, it's possible to keep moths as pets if you know what you're doing, and you carefully provide for their needs. Place them in a small cage. The food plant I provided was birch tree. These are the eggs of the Miller moth. This is where the life cycle started. Before I knew it, small larvae appeared from the eggs. They started feeding on the birch tree. Larvae develop rather quickly. If you keep their food fresh, then in what seems like no time, they develop from tiny specks into much bigger, much hairier and much chunkier creatures. So basically what happens to your partner after marriage. Eventually they have an awesome hairy appearance, let me show you. And I gotta say I really like their hair color, it's, it's very cool. It's very golden in a way. And it looks like the breathing is... Sorry for the noise. Oh God. Sorry. People with a midlife crisis detected. Um, yeah, I really love it. I think the ones with the golden hair are maybe getting closer to pupation. Wow. This is so awesome. Look at them. Some of them are escaping and crawling away. They have such a unique fluorescent color. You don't see this with many caterpillars. I really recommend breeding anything from the group of dagger moths or miller moths. They are insanely cool. And I do believe that sometimes it's important to not push the narrative that you always need big and exotic things or rare things in order to have an interest in these animals and experience them for yourself. There's a lot of local species in your area probably, unless you literally live in Iceland. There's always some local species that you can raise that are cool. I'm gonna put them back now, they're starting to escape. Once fully grown, they become brown. Why? Well, in order to spin a cocoon, they need to leave the plants that they have been living in for most of their life, and suddenly their green camouflage works against them. So brown it is. Eventually the moth spin cocoons. You can collect the cocoons by gently opening them. Then collect the pupa one by one and place them in a box. The pupa rarely develop into moths the same year. In most cases the species hibernates as pupa. Thus hibernate the pupa outdoors. They need to experience cold temperatures. And then spring has arrived. After spring, warm the moths up to room temperature. Yes, cold temperatures are actually necessary to hibernate them. Before you know, you have one awesome, cute and white little creature. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here it is. What do you think? Do you like it? Leave a comment. What are your opinions? Personally, I like this species a lot. I think it's very cute. Very cute little noctuid moth, little owlet from Europe and in my country it's very common. You can feed the moth using sugar water or honey water. Make sure to soak it in paper towels or a silk pad so they don't get stuck in a sticky, sticky substance. Once they extend their proboscis like this it means they are feeding. Oh and next they'll probably start mating. Yep, this is what their enclosure looks like. Many moths in one enclosure with fresh birch tree. Eventually they lay eggs on the birch. Here they are. Many of our moths close together. Many of the moths that we reared. Well, well, well guys, more and more and more of them are coming out every day. Hope y'all are enjoying the show. Enjoying this real special episode about a 
Classic European moth. Life cycle completed people and that is how I breed the Miller moth. Zam, isn't that cool? If you like this video I suggest that you watch the long version of it.